Welcome back everybody to episode two in my very first time playing through Crusader Kings 3. As Prince Howell, we are trying to unite the nation of Wales. It's going to become much more difficult now that there are really only two realms within Wales. Basically, you could say that I'm South Wales and we have Gwynedd, which is North Wales. Uh, it's going to be difficult uh, without help from our allies to take them on. And speaking of allies, we're going to have to worry about the fact that I'm 51 years old. I'm not going to be around forever. My heir is kind of an, uh, he's a cowardly lackey, uh, which doesn't bode well. Uh, his wife is from the house of Cantabria. Uh, and so we're not going to have uh, the West Frankians forever to help us with their massive army. So we're going to have to be thinking about new alliances. Now we do have a, a grandson, which will actually become the heir to my throne once I'm gone. We also have a sibling uh, who I believe, yeah, he's married. Uh, we have another unmarried son who's 20 years old. Uh, so we're going to have to go ahead and deal with that and get him married off to someone here fairly soon. Uh, beyond that, I think we're going to sit tight for a little while. We're going to have to build up our armies just a bit. I don't think we want to take on either one of these Jarls. Uh, we do need to think about the low control that we have. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, do something so we can improve the taxes and the levies that we can receive. Send our marshal there to increase control. So let's go ahead to our council. Uh, I, I really need to think about, too, uh, improving my council. For example, my bishop only has a, a learning skill of seven. I feel like we could probably do better than that. Uh, so we might need to look around and see what kind of other folks we have in the court. So with my wife, the Duchess, Princess uh, Ermintrude, we can actually choose what she does. Assisting ruler gives you little bonuses to everything. Uh, but you can also choose to just uh, focus on one thing, which will give you much signif uh, more significant bonus in those areas. I'm going to have her focus on chivalry. We actually cannot replace the bishop because Catholicism does not have a revocable clerical appointment doctrine. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't replace her, but we can replace our chancellor. And uh, diplomacy of six. We do have Mayor Peter, who has a diplomacy of nine. So it's not a huge improvement, but it's better. So let's go ahead and do that. And apparently, uh, this is, I believe, new on Crusader Kings 3. It used to be on uh, CK2 that if you replaced, for example, your chancellor, you had to reissue your instructions as far as what he was doing. The new one doesn't do that. Your um, continued appointment, you know, so I was already focusing on foreign affairs. Now I continue to focus on foreign affairs. So um, domestic affairs may be what I want to switch over to. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, currently we are controlling more than we can actually handle. Uh, so I'm going to pass one of these realms off to my son and heir. And that way we will uh, get down to the requisite four that we need to have. So let's see, educate child, grant titles, here we go. Uh, oh, really? It's not going to let me do this? The Lordship of Brecknock. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Now we're down to four. That'll make things a little better. Empty council position because I just sent him off. Oh, that was my chancellor. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at some of the different uh, maps that you can look at. For example, here is the uh, religion map. You can see we're Catholic along with most of uh, West Francia as well as Germ uh, the German states. Uh, over here you have Slovian scan. Uh, you've got Orthodox Christian over here, and then you've got your various Islamic faiths and other things. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like Jerusalem is not controlled by Catholicism right now. Cultures right here. You can see here we're part of the Welsh culture. Here are the houses that control certain areas right now. We've got the duchy titles. So really, I think if we're going to try to expand north, I think we should probably go for the Duchy of Powys next. That'll make him probably weak enough for us to take him on. Empire titles, kingdom titles. Obviously, we want to be king of Wales. And eventually, maybe many generations down the road, take the Empire of Britannia. So this is cool. You can ask your head of faith for gold. I have enough piety that I can leverage that to get some gold. So let's go ahead and do that. He'll give me 100 gold, and I'll lose 20 opinion, but that's okay. If he's going to accept it, I will absolutely take that gold. 
These funds will bring me victory. So we went from zero up to 95 now. We are a little close on income though, so we've got to be careful. Uh, because now that I raised those uh, men-at-arms units, they're costing me quite a bit. Oh, there we go. We're up to 1.6 now. Since they're not currently raised, they don't cost nearly as much. So let's go ahead and create another one. Oh, we don't have quite enough. I'd like to get some arm armored footmen if I can. So once I get up to 125, I'll go ahead and place an order for those. The sun is shining and peasants are milling about the tourney hosted by my wife. All my knights cheer as Princess Ermintrude announces the tournament in their honor. And for once, I simply sit and watch. I'm not going to spend an entire tourney day stuck to a throne, however. I too cheer for my knights. This is a day in our honor, my dear. Ah, oh, boy. Um, I'll cheer for the knights. Victory. Okay, so that's uh, a war that I was called to from my allies that I didn't actually partic participate in. Do we have ourselves a raid going on here? Uh, that's a pretty big army. I don't know that I'm going to be able to deal with that. 1,754. They're excellent. They've got... Is that 26 martial skill. Wow, I don't know. But we've got to fight them. I mean, I can't just sit by and let this happen. So we haven't created the new men-at-arms regiment. Uh, I don't think this is going to go well. I can't even raise them. For five months? It'll, I've been raided. Okay, so I'm going to actually switch now from strategy focus uh, to a stewardship focus. Try and make some money before the end of my life, if I can. You can see I've got 18 in martial skill, but only 9 uh, in stewardship. I'd like to raise that up. So we're going to go ahead and switch over there. Uh, I don't know what I can do. I guess there's not really anything I can do about this raid that's going on. Did he switch over to another place now? Interesting. All right, we're raising the army now. This is not, I don't think, going to go well. He's moving, though. He's trying to get away from me. We caught up to him. Oh, yeah, brutal. Can we get out of there? Did not go, did not go well at all. Now we're going to lose that force. They're going to run. Totally just destroyed. And he's pursuing me. That's the worst part. Lost half my army. I'll tell you what, though. It, it did the trick, though, because it sent him raiding elsewhere. So even though we lost a lot of men, we at least scared him off of our lands for now. We haven't looked at the constructing new buildings screen yet, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, for example, here uh, in our castle holding, uh, we could build farms and fields, which is going to add 0.5 in tax a month, which would actually be really huge moving forward. Um, pastoral lands, hunting grounds, uh, and you can see the defender advantage, the light cavalry damage, the uh, tax holding increase that it gives us. Here's a levy increase of 125 for building barracks. Uh, so you can see all the different options we can invest in. We've just got to save up some money for a while to do it. So now that we're on the uh, stewardship focus, hopefully we're going to see more decisions like this. Gurit, a free tenant renting some of my land in Glamorgan, has pulled in an exceptional harvest this season due to his meticulous planning. He wishes to use some of his profits to purchase a piece of my estate from me so that he can build upon his success and grow more crops next year. Uh, so I could add him to my court. If he can pay me hard coin, the land is his. The land is mine and mine alone. Uh, I'll let him pay me the 50 in coin. That gets me up to 160. So I want to look for opportunities to invest. We're not making any money from this barony right now. So in order to improve our income, we need to improve our control. Right now, control is 3 out of 100. And you can see it's hurting the levies uh, in the county by 48%, and it's hurting the taxes by 96%. So uh, we'll gain plus 0.8. Uh, that'll double my monthly income if we can improve our control. So I've gone ahead and set my marshal to start doing that. 
Ah, my wife is once again pregnant. I'm 51 years old and I've got a child on the way. So we'll see how that goes. The naming system's pretty cool the way that they do it now. So hopefully I'll give you, get a chance to let you see that. Ah, praise St. Bridget. Ermintrude has given birth to a perfect little son. Who will you become, my child, and what shall I call you? I can name him after myself, after my father, after her father, after an ancestor, a good Catholic name, a good Welsh name. So just take a look. You know, you name it after yourself, after your father, Ermintrude's father, Charles, after an ancestor, after a good Catholic name, a good Welsh name. I think we're going to go with Ermintrude's father. We're going to name him Charles after King Charles. May you grow to be strong and wise, my son. All right, we have a uh, notification that an important, uh, powerful vassal expects a council position. And, you know, this is something that you know, seems kind of petty, but this is something that definitely was a part of life uh, in this time in history. If you had a particularly rich or powerful vassal, somebody who owned a lot of land or had a lot of troops he could command, uh, he expected to have a certain amount of influence over the kingdom or over the prince or whatever it might be. And if he didn't get it, it was a good chance he could rebel against you. So you have to keep those guys happy now. Thankfully, we've got a pretty poor uh, spy master in terms of intrigue. So we could uh, go ahead and replace our spy master uh, with this mayor who has a slightly better intrigue level, but at least it's gonna get him on the council. Of course, now that creates a new issue, which is the guy that I rep just replaced is also a powerful vassal, but look at his learning skill. Man, if only I could get him to replace this bishop. Unfortunately, I can't do that. Uh, we also have someone we can lawfully imprison. Uh, Ed Flade uh, has committed crimes. In this case, he's a fornicator, <laughs> allowing you to imprison her. Oh, I'm sorry. It's her without uh, being seen as a, a tyrant. If you fail to imprison her, she will leave the mayor's court. So we're going to go ahead and imprison her. And we can ransom Georg. It's only 10. I guess we'll go ahead and do it. We've still got low control in three counties, so we're going to have to work on that one at a time. All right, well, I'm thinking ahead here. I've got a brand new uh, son, who Charles, who was just born. And let's see if we can go ahead and get him betrothed to the daughter of King Alfred the Great. That, oh, he will not accept. Um, what can we do about that? A matrilineal marriage? The children are born uh, of that marriage would be, no, that's not going to work either. Man, I got to find another powerful alliance. How about Mercia? Let's see what Mercia has got available. All right, so Mercia was a no-go. Uh, I'm just going to start looking here. I'm looking to see what's available. County of Trier, Cass uh, Cassell. I need something a little closer. High Chiefdom of Leinster, that might work. Let's go ahead and send that proposal. Hoping they'll accept. Excellent. The more allies we can have, the better, because we're going to need them to try and take some of this land. All right, here's our first stewardship perk available, and I think we want to go with Taxman, which gives me a 25% bonus to my tax collection effectiveness. Uh, we're up to earning one gold per month now. Uh, I think we probably want to go ahead and look at another men-at-arms unit. We've got to build up the power of our military as much as possible. Armored footmen is what I want to go with this time. Heavy infantry. Start with five and work our way up to a hundred. All right, looks like we've been called to war by our new ally, so we'll go ahead and help him out. I guess that'll make us look good in his eyes. Let's head across. I think we can probably speed this up a little bit for now. Oh, in a few days' time, my vile vassal, Countess Edflade, will travel through Glamorgan. If you orchestrate an ambush and capture her, I will reward you generously. If you accept my offer, you will get half of the money now and the other half when you turn her over. Petty King Burgred of Mercia. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, we captured her. Perfect. 
The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for the money. Could desperately use it, especially because my levies are raised at the moment. Oh, two years ago, you promised to aid me in the West Frankian claim on the King of Bavaria, yet so far you have done nothing to support me in this endeavor. What's the point of our alliance if you never even lift a finger to help me? I was hoping he wouldn't notice. Uh, we're going to have to pay him off. Oh, uh, boy. All right, here's our chance to take on the enemy army and earn some war score for ourselves. Uh, Princess Ermintrude is pregnant again. At this point... I almost don't want to have more children because that's just going to create more problems for my heir down the road. Uh, I think that's probably enough for now to have participated in the war. We're going to go ahead and send our troops home and stand them down because we're losing a ton of money. I'm just leaking money right now. There, that gets us back on the positive side. All right, so let's take a look at Crown Authority Law. Right now, uh, we have... Autonomous vassals, which is direct vassal opinion plus 10. Vassals provide levies and taxes, but are otherwise free to do as they wish. If we go to limited crown authority, rulers can change between available partition succession laws, titles can be revoked, vassals can be retracted, clan government vassals will provide at least 5% of levies and 2% of income. That costs 159 in prestige, which we can easily afford. I think we're going to go ahead and do that. So now we have a limited crown authority. Eventually, I'd like to go to high crown authority, but it can't be changed again uh, for quite a while. In fact, for 20 years. Uh, so that'll probably be my son uh, who will have to change that law. The other thing I think I want to do is change my realm succession law. Right now, it's confederate partition, which means all, all children inherit equally. Not a fan of that, especially as we get further into the game. That's going to be a problem. Uh, and you can see here, powerful vassal approval. So when you make changes, you can see how the vassals are going to feel about that. Now, obviously, um, going to a single heir primogeniture, which we can't do because we need to have high crown authority, which we're not going to be able to do quite yet. Um, you can see how that would affect the different opinions. So what about partition? Um, all children inherit equally high partition all ch children inherit but it doesn't have to be equally so we're not going to be able to change that right now but that's something to do down the road ah we've got a daughter uh, praise St. Bridget Ermintrude has given birth to a perfect little daughter um, what's Ermintrude's mother's name uh, no I don't think so after an ancestor no good Catholic name a good Welsh name Dwaiway Dwaiwa oh man I'll, I'll, I'll butcher that we'll name her after our after my wife. All right, let's give this a try again. Now that I've got a daughter, what are the odds we could get the son of Prince Alfred, or of uh, King Alfred of Wessex? He will accept. That's fantastic news. So my daughter Ermintrude is now betrothed to the son of King Alfred. Now, probably not his eldest son, but that's really not a big deal. I've now got an alliance with one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful king uh, in Britain. So that's huge for me. And now I can start to think about maybe expanding the kingdom a little bit with that help. Far from home, a stranger is brought before me. He has been waiting outside the castle gates for a week, my liege, a guard informs me. My name is Anders, your highness. I've traveled far and wide and seen many things, but my family and I are weary of the road. If you allow us to stay, I'll happily share my knowledge of the world with you and be your loyal servant. Embrace God, this will be your home. Uh, he becomes a courtier of mine, converts to Catholicism. Uh, sure, let's do that. And then we'll see if maybe we could add him. All right, so there's a war that's one that I did nothing to help out with. Uh, let's look at our council for a minute because I think once again we have an issue with powerful nobles not having a place. This guy is a little better choice for uh, Spymaster. I, don't, I still don't have a particularly good chancellor. Eight. Eh, this guy's not any better. We do have a better option for steward, though. Let's go ahead and put him in at steward. Yep. Fifteen. A lot better. New stewardship perk available. Cutting cornerstones. Uh, no. Defensive measures. Our fort level and garrison size are increased. I think we'll do that. 
So I'm uh, nearly 60 years old now. I'm 59. It's amazing to me. Oh, and just, oh no. I thought I was about to see that I died, but it looks like my son died. That may not be the worst thing in the world because he was a kind of a crappy son anyway as far as his stats go. Um, is his son now the heir? Yep, he's my heir. Okay. He's a content altruist. He's only 10 years old. And who's he betrothed to? Or is he betrothed? I don't think he is. Let's arrange a marriage. Alliance power. Wait. Oh, there we go. That's why. Doesn't look like I'm currently able to marry him off. That's why it's not showing an option over here next to him. Probably because he's my grandson. And because he's actually the Lord of Brecknock now. So we're into almost 890 AD. One of the other ways that you can gain a claim on a title is to request that claim from the Pope. Uh, so I'm actually looking at Powys as the next place I want to go. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can request a claim from the Pope uh, on the Earldom of Amethyg. Looks like we do not have... Oh, we don't have enough piety. Oh, goodness. Thought I, I was a little more pious than I am. <laughs> so we need 150 piety to be able to do that. That's obviously not going to happen. Oh, the King of Bavaria is beating the West Frankians right now. And I'm really in no position to help them with that. Let's kind of zoom out and see the world right now. Sweden. Boy, look at uh, the swaths of... So Mercia basically has all but ceased to exist. When the raised voices reach me yet again, I quench my instinct instinct to turn on my heel. The constant bickering of my vassals, Mayor Fernfail and Mayor Cadwall, is enough to drive any man mad. Something must be done. So we're going to gain 150 prestige to try to deal with it, but we are going to get stressed out. They both lost an opinion of me. I came across as an insensitive meddler. Oh well. We've got a lot of available options as far as decisions go now. But first, we got to look at this. Anders is fiddling nervously with his sleeve as I open the door to my chambers. What is he doing here at this hour? My deepest apologies, but I must speak to you in private. I've discovered something very interesting. He's discovered a secret of Mayor Inderth's. He's willing to share it with me if I let him off the hook. Um, okay, sure, tell me. Oh, he's got a lover. Eh, that's not a huge deal. He can have a lover if he wants. All right, we can lawfully imprison Leofwine. He's a criminal. He failed to treat Kin. 32% uh, chance of imprisoning him. That's not real good odds. We can designate a guardian for Charles. Uh, Princess Ermintrude can be the guardian. Uh, I don't think there's anything else there we need to do. Low control. We need to continue working on control. Let's go ahead and fabricate a claim. Uh, I, don't, I want to claim on Herefordshire. I want to claim on Furlix right here. So let's go ahead and look at our council for a second. There we go. I am now the head of Welsh culture. Hey, kudos to me. Uh, at least it's not one of these other guys anymore. So you can see here. Uh, oh, that would be why. Holy cow. So this is actually really huge news. That's why I'm now the head of Welsh culture, because uh, it looks like this whole region here has been taken over by the Vikings. That's not good. It's going to have to be us and Alfred the Great holding against the mighty Viking hordes now. New perk available. Organized muster rolls. Levy reinforcement rate 100%. What else can we do here? meritocracy um no i'm just looking down the road of what's available golden obligations it is i have proud through the documents both ancient and of less certain provenance i have finally enough material to make the case you are the rightful lordship of Furlix. see it done it's going to cost 81 gold 
to fabricate that title. But I think now, as soon as we finish up increasing control uh, of this county over here, I think we'll go ahead and press our claim. Hopefully, Alfred comes to help out. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Press our claims. We definitely are going to need our allies. We don't have an ally in West Francia anymore. But I think we've got enough in Alfred to do this. So let's go ahead and call. I like this little button here. It really makes things much easier. He will not accept. Oh, different war. I don't want... Uh, no, I don't want to be in that war. That's the problem. It's trying to call him to the wrong war. Let's get out of that war. I can't offer a peace. Oh, this is a problem. All right, we just need to select which war we wanted to call him to. That's the issue. All right, we've called both our allies to the war. Let's cross our fingers, raise our armies. Thank you, King Alfred. I always knew I could count on you. Send the armies forth. Whose army is that? Okay, so let's go. So far, so good. And we've got friends that have come as well. Tourney day. I will cheer my knights while we lay claim to our title. Looks like it's going to go pretty easily. Th oh, man. Owain died. Did he die in battle, I wonder? Life is, oh, mental break, torrential grief. Yeah, that would do it. Two of my sons just died. I've reached stress level one. Every 100 stress a character accumulates also causes them to gain a stress level. Stress levels range from zero to three, with each level imposing increased penalties to a character's fertility and health. As long as they have at least one stress level, they're vulnerable to mental breaks. Uh, so I can drop my stress by drinking it away. Um, all right, let's do that. I'm melancholic. That's okay. I'm toward the end of my life anyway. Whose army is that? Nothing to worry about. Scandalous priest. The Catholic world was appalled to learn that Pope Alexander himself was discovered torturing a servant boy. Oh, boy. In a secret chamber under his rooms, taking apparent delight in the poor boy's anguished screams. While scandals among the clergy are nothing new, many are aghast that the head of our faith would succumb to such temptations. So should I condemn the Pope? I'll gain a hundred piety for it. Yeah, let's do that. Is he actually able to... No, he doesn't have enough soldiers to lay siege there. Wars are expensive. Raise additional taxes. That's more stress. All right, we're at plus 61. We've got to hurry up and, and win this war so that we can stand down our levies. We've also got an empty council position for steward. Yeah, we're going to assign this guy here. Wait, what? There we go. We had to get him into my court first. Big armies now. Who's that? Is that Alfred? Yeah, the Army of Winchester. Very cool. Very cool. That is great news right there. We're at 95%. I wonder if that's enough to enforce our demands. No, it's going to have to be 100. 97, 98, 100. There we go. Excellent news. Stand down the army. No, we can't. We got to get him back home first. All right. Our realm has grown. And by the time we pass it on to our son, I think my son is probably going to be able to become the king of Wales. We just got to push this a little further. Next thing we need to do is we need to deal with the size of our demands being too large. Uh, so let's go ahead. Can we Can we arrange a marriage? No, we can't he's a different area we might be able to pass on additional titles to him though the lordship of furlix we'll go ahead and add that to what he owns there we go 
and now we're getting plus 2.5 so we got a better income on the way um, we're in debt but that'll be dealt with soon only two counties with low control now can depend, demand payment from Lord Howell for what? that's my grandson All right, we'll use the hook that we've got on him. Designate a guard, guardian for my daughter. We'll let my wife handle that. In line to inherit two titles, Brecknick and Furlick. So that's just the two from my grandson because he doesn't have an heir. All right, so it looks like King Alfred is going to war with Mercia for control of that nation. I think we definitely need to accept that. Uh, we've got an empty council position. Looks like my chancellor died. Who could I appoint in his stead? Oh, who's this here? This mayor's got a 21. That's excellent news. All right, let's raise the troops and go to war with Alfred for control of Mercia. Sweden controls Mercia right now, although uh, do we really want Alfred to get that much more powerful? Uh, I guess we have to help. Man, he's got some big armies. We're going to do our part. Kind of feel like I'm in the world of the last kingdom right now. Oh boy. Maybe it wasn't the best thing to go to war. That's a populist uprising. That's not even a part of that war. Oh, brutal. At least most of my army survived. Jeez, look at that war. I mean, Alfred's doing pretty good. Pretty sure he doesn't need my help. We'll go ahead and send the force in one more time. A lot of allies have helped out with this. If we can at least take Herefordshire for him, I think we will f feel like we've done our part. That is a huge war going on for Mercia. I've got it on really fast. If it was my war, I definitely wouldn't be simming this fast. All right, so it looks like the Kingdom of Sweden is fighting a pretty big war there. We'll see if we can get in in time to help out. No. Oh, there it is. Wow. Look at that. Look at how much area King Alfred controls now. Good. He should be willing to help me in my attempt to become King of Wales. So let's see if we can get uh, the Pope to... Uh, he's not going to do it, probably because he doesn't like me. Um, Pope has a much better opinion of Lady Lear than of me, so that's not going to help. Uh, or is it... No, it's actually a worse opinion of Lady Lear than of me. Uh, but it's a minus 50 base reluctance, and that's the problem. What about over here? Doesn't look like it's possible there either. All right, well, we have to sit back and do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Uh, I couldn't raise my army to fight against this raid because my rally point is under siege, but I, I am able to change the rally point. So you can uh, see here I added one in Brecon. Now we can raise our army. Whoa, hey, there we go. You have died. Prince Howell I of Dewbirth has rested in the arms of the Lord at the age of 67. That's pretty good. Pretty good for this time and place in history. Uh, he has died of old age, a tormented man. He had long desired the sweet embrace of death. Prince Howell ascends to the throne. Having mastered many skills, he is sure to be admired by his subjects. He's 18, so the good news is I don't have to worry about a council uh, to lead. So now I'm the new dynasty head of the Gwent dynasty. We've got a new bishop. I've joined a war, and that's the West Frankian War that never seems to end that I wish I wasn't part of because I'm not even allied with him anymore. Uh, but we're still in the process of trying to raise the military. Let's go ahead and raise all armies in Brecon. Looks like it's, it takes longer to raise it there than if I'd raise it. Oh, look at that. Now he took off. Okay. I guess we can have them stand down now. All right, we have a new claim that has been created. Why is my income so low? I have raised armies still. I thought I disbanded all my armies. I 
I guess we gotta disband these too. Time to choose a lifestyle for Howell, who apparently has an eye patch. I don't know how that came about, but interesting choices to make now. Because of your intrigue ed education, you gain 30% more experience in this lifestyle. So let's start with intrigue. Ah, oh boy. Decisions here. Intimidation focus. Let's do that. Now it's time to choose a spouse. And this is really important because I need powerful allies as I continue to work toward becoming the King of Wales, which I think I'm getting pretty close to being able to do. Bavarian. All right. This will be interesting. I think let's go with her. Judda. It does cost us some prestige to marry down like that, but that's okay. So I think if we take one more county, that'll allow us to claim that principality. If I have two principalities, I feel like that's probably enough to claim the King of Wales. At least I think that's how it should work. All right, we're finally out of that war with West Francia against Bavaria. And now we've got our first perk. Fertility, 30%. Seduction scheme power, 30%. When you torture someone, I don't think I want to torture anyone. Dreadful gain, 30%. I don't know, I feel like this is probably not the way I want to go with this intrigue, but I just couldn't pass up the fact that it's so easy to level up because of my education. Hopefully we'll start having children soon. Okay, so we have a claim that we can press. Let's go ahead and do so. If my theory is right, this is going to be our chance to really make some things happen. Let's raise our armies. I feel like we should have more than 506. Oh, it's going to go up. We've got a number of... Um, okay, so we've got two, two forces here. Their rally points are in two different places. Uh, apparently, my grandson on his own... Hey, my wife's pregnant. Excellent. Had raised some troops of his own so we've got a pretty substantial force now including a decent amount of trained men at arms another perk available for intrigue who has already put these guys under siege here we go most appalling discovery I made about Lord Charles. This man is engaging in unsavory and dishonorable activities behind your back. Um, thank you, I guess. Charles is my uncle. Thriving in chaos. Yes, please. Because there's going to be some chaos coming. Siege of Shrewsbury. Ah... Uh. We could name her Hema after my perceptive mother. Ah, uh, Hema it is. Okay. So I didn't actually get to pick that one. I had to either say yes or no to my wife's suggestion. They were plus 67%. Let's see if we can finish this war and claim this title. I think once we finish this siege, that ought to do it. Then it's going to be interesting. No, 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 no. That's a raider. Okay, we got 100%. Enforce demands. Yes. So be it. Now, here's the question. Where does that put me? Let's ransom this lord. Yep. Where does that put me in terms of being able to create these titles? I want to take a look at them. All right, so Kingdom of Wales. What do we need for the Kingdom of Wales? We need seven du jour counties. I've got six. Uh, two du jour duchies, currently one. I should be able to gain one of those duchy titles, though. So let's take a look at that for a second. Oh, Shrewsbury, they're not actually part of England, are they? That actually makes sense because I think Shrewsbury's in Shropshire which is part of England. Yeah, okay, so I took territory that's not a part of Wales. I need this right here. 
Let's talk about the dynasty legacies that are a part of this game. Uh, once you get to a certain place, you start to have legacies that become associated with your dynasty for the whole of the game. Uh, and you can see the first level of each of those. Warfare, law, guile, blood, erudition, uh, glory, and kin. Uh, and you can see the bonuses that each of those give to every member of your dynasty. And they cost a lot to be able to purchase. Uh, we're certainly not there yet. We need a thousand renown to be able to get the first one. We're at 405. But I just think that's a really cool feature of this game. You can look at your dynasty tree and kind of zoom out and see the whole tree from start to finish. Obviously, we're fairly new into the game. Uh, so there's not a lot to see so far. But there I am, Howell II, uh, the grandson of Howell I. You can see Lord Charles is still alive, uh, as well as my 16-year-old Aunt Ermintrude. Uh, and then you can see kind of cousins, siblings, uh, everybody else that's out there right now. I just I love that as a genealogist. I, I just think that kind of stuff's really cool. All right. We've got a chance to make our claim. I could even argue the rightful lord of the Principality of Powys. Uh we can press that, but we're going to lose a ton of money in doing so. Now, I wonder if we can get the Pope to give us some money. It appears not. So it's going to take a while for us to get back on the positive so we can declare war and gain not only this barony or this uh, county, but also the principality and with it, the Kingdom of Wales. So as soon as we can get in the positive, we'll be able to claim Wales. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch my lifestyle. Uh, we're going to switch over to stewardship, wealth focus. Get that money up faster. A ruler in the making. There's no end to the opinions and wants of my daughter and heir, Emma. Uh, half the time she is trying to tell me what to do instead of the other way around. She's bossy. Oh boy. Uh, another daughter. Uh, let's see. After my mother. Alzona. No. After an ancestor. No. Not a lot of good choices. How about a good Catholic name? Constance. That's my grandmother's name. We'll go with that. There's an army in here right now in the territory that I want to be able to take, but we're still a ways away from that. We've still got 72 in debt. Here's a chance to marry off my 19-year-old brother, well, at least get a betrothal uh, to Bourgogne Capet, who's the, um, I would guess, a mem yeah, she's a member of the House of Capet, which would be the French royal family. Uh, so that is going to be a big get for me. And now we have an alliance with King Louis of uh, Lotharingia. Uh, excellent. The more alliances, the better. Now we just need to get out of debt so I can claim Wales. An heir, a son and heir. Um, after my father, Arthfail, no. After an ancestor, Petro, how about a good Catholic name like John? We're anglicizing Wales. We're getting so close to being able to claim whales at last there's our first stewardship perk that's excellent news tax man now we're gaining 1.8 so we're not far away well it feels like my wife and i are only doing one thing right now <laughs> we've got another child another son let's give him a good welsh name this time these names were important back then they they were very intentional the way that thing uh, that folks were named at times. Uh, I don't have a title claim anymore. I must have lost it. Darn it. Because now I'm finally going to be out of debt and not be able to claim the title. So I'm also not able to pause for some reason. There we go. So let's do this again then. Go to our council and fabricate a claim. All right. In what seems like a bit of a broken record, I've got another son. <laughs> I'm about to kill her off just so we can stop having children because too many children can become a real issue down the road when you're dealing with people fighting over uh, titles and things like that. 
a uh, good Catholic name, Thomas Works. Uh, in fact, speaking of titles, my brother has actually uh, formed a cadet branch of the house, but uh, he's actually now, or no, I think that was my uncle who actually did that. Um, let me go to my parents and look at, here he is. So here's Lord Charles. And you can see he's actually formed House Penlin, which is a cadet branch of the dynasty of Gwent. Um, but my brother is actually a, a priest now. I've got another available perk here. All right. We're almost done with this claim. I don't know why suddenly the space bar won't pause and unpause. Scandalous priest, condemn him. My mother died. That apparently did not rise to the level of popping up on the screen. What ruler is embracing heresies? All right, see it done. Oh, we're back. Back in the negative now because I had to claim that title. Oh, man. I spend all the money to claim the titles, but then I never get a chance to press the claim because I'm in debt. Oh, uh, we lost that child. Probably not the worst thing in the world that that happened. I can't declare war quite yet. So, right before we go to war here pretty soon, uh, the last thing I want to look at that we haven't looked at yet is the Welsh culture. And the culture is where you see uh, discoveries being made. Onager has just been discovered. Uh, so I can recruit them as men-at-arms now, uh, known to the Welsh. And you can see here, uh, based on all of the available uh, technologies and the folks who are researching around me, you can see how long it's going to be before certain things are discovered, at least based on where things are right now. And we're pretty far off on some of these. We'll look at that more as we get a little further down the road. It's 913 A.D., Strike a deal with the chief mason. Um, I don't want to lose money. Ah, oh, there's another siege going on there. I hope that doesn't affect my claim on the title. So I think that's really been actually a pretty long episode. A lot has happened. We've gone through something like 35 years of time on this episode. So I'm going to wrap it up right there. Beginning of the next episode, we should have a war that will not only uh, decide the fate of that county, it's going to decide uh, whether or not I become the King of Wales. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Drop a like if you would, and we'll see you again in a couple of days with another episode. Thanks for watching.